up guys, Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're looking at the top 10 best cards in Legacy of the Valiant. Ooh, we're getting back to the best cards in the main set of the games, Idge. It's been an absolute slog, holy crap. And we're still only like mid era. Uh, how long am I doing this? Dance oh my god! Imagine if I didn't have a full-time job and I could do more than one video a week. We'd be like... What, maybe pendulums by now? <laughs> ah, hell, I don't care. This is my favorite era of Yugi Mans because it's when Ryan and I first got back into the game after a long hiatus. And uh, I was like, what them black cards do though? Some of my favorite memories of Yu-Gi-Oh come from this pre duels Alliance era. So maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just savoring this section. But anyway, let's get started. Number 10 is Downard Magician. This is a rank four dark spellcaster monster with 2100 attack and 200 defense, made of two level four spellcaster monsters. What do? During your main phase two, you can also exceed some in this card by slapping on top of a rank three or lower monster you currently control. Its material gets transferred to this thing. And this card gets 200 attack for every material stuck to it. Neat. So the more materials on the thing that you use to make it, the more attack power it gets. Big nom. Number. Now, for something that's essentially just a beat stick, why do we care? I care. Well, back in the day, if you were playing a low level rank whatever spam deck, it was nice that during your main phase too, you could go into something that was a relatively decent beat stick. Granted, it would have to live a couple of turns for you to be able to use it, but it was nice to have the option to get something on board with a little bit of attack power. Nowadays though, the function is a little bit different and actually probably a little better. Things like Zeus in our game, the more material you stick to the damn thing, the better. So you could attack with Joyous Melfi and then slap Zeus on top of that, or you can attack with Joyous Melfi, slap Downard on it, and then slap Zeus on that. So then, and then Zeus has so much materials, it's not even fair. She kind of ends up in the same position as Full Armor Photon Dragon, or Fap Dragon. <laughs> it's just a step along the way, but you know what? That does serve a pretty solid function in the game, so cool. Number, not, uh, wait. Yes, nine. How many fingers are on a human hand? Ghost Trick Jack Frost. Level one Dark Fiend monster. 800 attack, 100 defense. Okay, so we are in the height of Ghost Trick's power here in Legacy of the Valiant. <laughs> oh yeah. Ghost Tricks were never a particularly powerful deck. The best thing they could do was lose really slowly. But a couple of the cards in their arsenal, like Alucard and Jack Frost here, do have some pretty solid effects and were used, sadly, better in other decks. <laughs> What's Jack Frost do? Uh, uh. Well, it ain't frosty. Can I be normal summon unless you control another ghost trick monster? Now this is pretty annoying because it means if you don't have another ghost trick on the field, you have to set this thing first and most of the ghost tricks do that and it's a big pain in the butt. And actually it's probably a big reason why the deck has a hard time being any kind of level of competitive. But besides, you know, now they have an entire monster type that they can't deal with. But the deck does deal with putting things face down and being face down, so even though their clunky, awkward summoning condition is a restriction, it does have some awkward and clunky synergy with the deck, so uh, even though it is more of a hindrance than a help, it, you know, it's not all bad, I suppose. But now, the thing we actually give a shit about is its other effect. Once per turn, you can change this thing to face down defense position. I'm just kidding. We don't care about that either. <laughs> when your opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you can put their monster face down defense position and then special summon this thing from your hand in face down defense position. So it's like a weird combination of Book of Moon and Battle Fader. And if you're playing like a stall deck, this is a great resource. It was like a common in the set. And even if you're not playing like a stall deck, there is still some utility here because putting your opponent's really good boss monster with a bunch of stupid protection on it face down turns that all off. So that's even a good option for that even if you're not playing a stall. Number eight is Obedient Schooled. Normal spell card. If you control no monsters, you can special summon three level two or lower effect beast type monsters from your deck to your field, as long as they have different names and their effects are negated. Also, you destroy them during the end phase. And for the rest of the turn, you can only special summon beast type monsters. Okay, so um, this could have all the restrictions in the world, 
and it would not matter, summoning three free bodies from your deck is absurd. So what is a free body? Granted, three is a little awkward, because uh, most extra monsters are made of like two monsters, so what do you do with that third one? Ah, that's what your normal summon's for, I guess. But this does let you just cherry pick crap out of your deck. The only problem is that it's level two or lower beasts. The raccoon deck, which is what would have been playing this back in the day, did have some rogue level competitive success, but you know, it was never like a world ending deck to summon big tanuki token. But nowadays, Melfies are actually surprisingly competent rogue strategy. So like, um, yeah, they play three of this. Uh, this is their win con, basically. This card's dumb. Why is Embarky on a beast? Can we talk about that instead? That's bullshit. That's, it's bullshit. Number seven, the first monarch. Continuous trap card. Ah, yes, the first monarch. Not to be confused with the prime monarch? Is that what the other one's called? I don't know. They're like the same card. <laughs> the name's practically the same. I always forget which one is which. But the first monarch is a trap card that can summon itself as a monster. Dark Fiend, level six, 1000 attack, 2400 defense. It has monarch stats, but like flipped. And if you summon it this way, I, I don't know how you would summon it in any other way, but if you do, you can use the option option to discard one card from your hand and declare an attribute. This card's attribute becomes the attribute that you declared instead of the dark pit it normally is. And it can be used as two tributes for the tribute summon of a monster with that same attribute. But it locks you into special summons of monsters of that attribute. But you're playing this in Monarchs probably, so special summoning is not a thing that you do too much of. So that's not really a problem. Okay, why would you do this? Well, like I said before, Monarchs don't do a hell of a lot of special summoning, but what they do do a lot of is tribute summoning. And like every one of the monarchs gets like effects and then like bonus effects if the thing you attributed the summoned it with is also sharing the attribute of the thing that that it is i explained that in literally the most clumsy way possible monarchs like their material to be the same attribute as them there and because this trap monster can modulate its attribute and become two tributes if you want to make like a mega monarch just seems like it helps facilitate your tribute summons not too bad Number six, Imperial Tombs of Necro Valley. Imperial Tomb of the Necro Dancer. I didn't ask to be turned. Counter trap card. When a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated. While a Gravekeeper's monster in Necro Valley are on the field, negate that activation and if you do, destroy that card. Cool, it's just an infinity barrier for the Gravekeepers. Neat. Can we talk about though that it says while Necro Valley and a Gravekeeper monster are on the field? Does it say your field? Does that mean like if you're playing against Gravekeepers, you can tech this in? <laughs> this card is absolutely fantastic and it really does show you um, sometimes you can give a single deck just absolute nukes of abilities and they still not be like a tier one deck. <laughs> uh, that spell card that nukes their hand, Necro Valley being the best like field spell card in the entire history of the game and this thing being Omni Negate, uh, yeah, you'd think this deck would be better. <laughs> It's still okay. It's still, it's always been a really decent little rogue option, especially like, you know, in different formats like Duel Links, but it is certainly an interesting case study nonetheless. Bujinte Sukiyomi is the next one. Rank four light beast warrior monster, 1823. Okay, cool. Made of two level four light monsters. Okay, cool, so bush has got another extra deck monster, but it's generic enough to be used in other things like, I don't know, Agents, S-Knights, and Stellars if you're a jerk. <laughs> Plenty of light decks, what does it do? Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card and discard your entire hand, minimum one. You at least have to have one card in your hand. And if you do, draw two cards. Hey, if you do that with only one card in your hand, that's a plus. Very cool, pot of greed. Even losing two cards and going even is still pretty solid to cycle two cards into your hand. Like that's really solid. Like this card is fantastic. Also, if you are playing this in Bujins, it does have a bonus ability. When this thing you controlled while face up is sent from the field to the graveyard via an opponent's card effect, you can target level four beast warrior Bujin monsters in your graveyard up to the number of materials this thing had and special summon those targets. You can only control one of these damn things. Cool, so if your opponent kills it, you get some of your Bujin guys back, probably the ones that you made it with. That's neat. Granted, it's only the Beast Warrior ones, but yeah, those are the ones you want anyway, right? 
Number four, shared ride. Is a soul ride. <laughs> Quick play spell card. Ooh, the best in the game. For the rest of the turn, each time a card is added from the main deck or graveyard to your opponent's hand, except by drawing them, <laughs> drawing from your graveyard, you immediately draw one card. You can only activate one shared ride per turn. Okay, so it's basically a spell version of Maxi. Instead of drawing a card on a special summon, you get to draw cards when your opponent is searching things from their deck, or again, adding from the graveyard. <laughs> I bet you forgot it did that one. And this thing's pretty cool because it has an advantage over something similar like a uh, Droll and Lockbird, where you can just kind of do it like during their standby phase because it is a quick play spell card and they don't, they didn't need to have searched a thing previously in order to allow you to activate the card unlike Droll and Lock. The graveyard thing is also a nice little icing on the cake. I guess you could also compare this thing to Ash Blossom, which stops one search. This allows your opponent to search anything they want, but they better be ready to give you a big hand. It's just a good side deck card. Number three is Leo, Keeper of the Sacred Tree. OMG. <laughs> Level 10 Earth Beast Monster. 3100 attack, 1900 defense. That's big number. That's a big number. Made of one tuner and one non-tuner. It's generic. Very cool. And as a level 10, it's cool to see that it's only made of, at minimum, two things. A lot of these bigger synchros are made of like one tuner and a bunch of non-tuners, so, so one in potentially one is pretty solid and easy to make. Your opponent cannot target this thing with card effects except during your main phase two. <laughs> what a weird protection. Your opponent can only not target it, so you can equip this thing with moon mirror shield all you want. <laughs> I don't know why you would, but you can. Power of the Guardian! But it's not a giant untargetable boss monster, it's just mostly untargetable. Your opponent does have that option during your main phase 2, uh, Karma Cut, I guess, or like Phoenix Chain. Now the untargetable thing is really cool, but the thing I really like about this is the 3100 big number. Most decks can put out a 3k beater, that just seems to be like the power ceiling for most decks. Blue Eyes White Dragon is the gold standard of what a big boss monster is supposed to look like. So something with just a little bit more can be actually really obnoxious. Love me a Leo. Good card. Number two is number 101, Silent Honor Arc. Ooh, a classic. Nothing says expensive extra deck rank four monster like Silent Honor Arc. When this thing came out, people were like, oh, I need to give me one of those. I have got to give me one of these. Rank 4 Aqua Water Monster, 2100 attack, 1000 defense made of two level 4 monsters. It's Genera. As all good rank 4 should be. Detach two materials from this card to target one face up attack position special summoned monster your opponent controls and attach it to this thing as material. You can only use this effect once per turn. But if this thing would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach one material from it instead. So not only is this card a fantastic non-destruction form of removal for an opponent's monster, it also has some level of self-protection. This monster's just missing in a gate, then it would be perfect. It's a damn shame that things like Castell, the Sky Blasting Musketeer eventually replace this card in people's extra deck because spinning a thing back to the deck is better than attaching it to a card. But at the time, removing a card from the field that was not a destruction removal was a huge deal because a lot of monsters did something when you specifically destroyed them. And in Exceed material going to the graveyard from the monster it was attached to isn't considered a destruction. Hell, it's not even considered being uh, leaving the field. And not to mention its rank up form is really, really good too. All right, honorable mention. Today's honorable mention is Gorgonic Guardian. Rank free dark rock C monster. 1600 attack, 1200 defense. It's, it's not the biggest thing in the world. Poor Gorgonic Guardian. It's a fan. Fantastic XC monster, one of the best in the set. It's made of two level three rock type monsters, so literally no deck in the world can make this dumb thing. Trimids can kinda do it. Uh, the Gorgonic deck is not really a deck. War rocks aren't rocks. <laughs> for some reason. This fantastic monster just really never had a home, but what does it do? As a quick effect, you can target an opponent's monster and negate its effects and zero out its attack. That's awesome. The fact that this thing only has 1600 attack doesn't matter if the monster that you're trying to fight gets zeroed out into a donut. And its effects are negated. And it's a quick effect. That's so dumbly powerful. It also isn't a hard once per turn, so if your deck can make a couple of these things, holy sh not only that, if you use that quick effect on your turn, because it only lasts for the turn you use it, you can use its second effect. As an ignition effect, you can target one monster in the field with zero attack and blow it up. Oh, I wonder 
I wonder where the synergy from that comes from. And our dishonorable mention is standoff. <laughs> this card's a mess. Normal spell card. Are you ready? All right, I'm just gonna read this from the script because it, uh, if I paraphrase it, you 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 won't you won't gel with me. Target one face up attack position monster on either side of the field. Semicolon. That's the activation condition. All right, problems. Regardless of what this does, we need two face up attack position monsters, one on each side of the field. Dead turn one. Cool, might as well be a trap card. If both monsters are still face up on the field, comma. All right, so upon resolution, we need to check to see if both of those monsters are still there. Meaning if you're trying to play this in something like, I don't know, chain beat and be cheeky and have your monster leave the field, you just bungle the card. Cool, negate their effects, comma. All right, so if both of them are still there, you zero out their effects. If both of their effects were negated this way, comma. Okay, so again, it has to work. Their effects must be negated. You can't negate the effects of a monster whose effects can't be negated and be like, oh, I got around it by targeting my guy who's unaffected by stuff. No, it needs to work. As long as those monsters are face up on the field in attack position, comma. Okay, so they can't be turned to defense mode or anything cheesy. They need to stay the way they were. They cannot be destroyed by battle, comma. Are unaffected by other card effects, comma. Also, they cannot attack or change their battle positions. Holy. Okay, so you ran the absolute triathlon to get this card to fully resolve. Nice. What did you get for it? Two monsters stuck on the board that can't do nothing. Just play Fiendish Chain, you jackass. It does half the same thing, but only to one monster, your opponent's monster. The one you'd want to do half this crap to. Obviously, the card's called Standoff, so the idea is that it's two guys just kind of staring at each other from across the battlefield. It's basically what the art is. But why, though? All right, sweet. Number one is Metamats. Oh, Metamats, you guys did it. You made the top of the list and not simply because I forgot to put the sponsor in until just now. Why is it always at the end I remember to do this? Use my code troll the meta at checkout to get 10% off your custom cloth playmat. They're real nice and smooth. I still want him to make my Simu Daki Makara. The real number one is Evil Swarm Exciton Knight. Exciton Knight? How do you pronounce this? Everyone says it's different. Rank four light feed monster. Ooh, that's a spicy combo. 1900 attack, but no defense. <laughs> it don't matter, trust me. Two level four monsters. Oh, shite. It's generic. What's funny is I remember when this set came out, everyone was more hyped about the Silent Honor arc than this thing, which is really funny because this card is, this card's technically better. Once per chain. <laughs> Ooh, I love when it says that. During your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, quick effect. If your opponent controls a total more cards than you in their hand and field, detach a material from this card and blow up everything. All other cards on the field. The Exiton Knight stays around. Ooh, and it's once per chain. Ooh, he can do it again. If something happens, he can do it again. But your opponent doesn't take any more damage for the rest of the turn, who cares? I mean, yeah, go figure. A quick effect board nuke is good. This makes you want to play like some, some pre-duels to Lions, Yu-Gi-Oh. When's that, when's that Time Wizard format coming out? When are we doing that? All right, guys, that was the list, Legacy of the Valiant. Uh, remember this set fondly. It's a very good set. And you know what came out around this time in the deck that I was playing around this time? Spirits. So I think next episode, we're gonna be looking at the top 10 spirit monsters, one of my favorite subset of monsters. I'm actually looking forward to that one. Woo. So anyway, guys, remember if you don't troll the meadow who will, I'll see you guys next time. Woo. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys wanna be part of the Goblin Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Holy shit, look out mountains a real place. <laughs> hey Hot Rod, the shuttle's landing! Dare, dare to believe you can survive. Some of my best memories in Yu-Gi-Oh are from this from this <laughs> From this spree! Some of my some of my some of my blah, 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 blah. Some of my baby bleh, fuck. Oh man, I can't wait to do the video. It is going to be 
the good one. It does have some awkward, clunky. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, synergy. When this card you controlled well faced. Uh, when this card you controlled. Uh, when this card. <laughs> oh my god, the problem solving card text on this. When this card that you controlled is sent from the face. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Why is it written like that? Is that really say that? Gorgonic Gordian. Nah, the real number one. <laughs> <laughs> the real <laughs> Oh, I'm still laughing at the Simu pillow. Are you ready, kids? No, Captain, please don't. I can't hear you. We did it, boys.